I'm sharing with you five simple strategies that I use to manage sensory overload as a neurodivergent woman in my 50s. These are the same strategies that I use each day during my work day as a busy elementary school teacher. So in this video, you're going to learn the five strategies that I choose from when sensory overwhelm hits me. You're going to learn how I learned about these five strategies. And then finally, you're going to learn how you can choose the strategies that are going to work best for you. Before I realized how well these strategies worked and I was taking in so much sensory input, I would end up coming home from a busy work day and head straight up to my room and under the covers in order to recover from the overwhelming stimulus that I was absorbing each day. So the first strategy that I learned to use to help me when I'm feeling overwhelmed by all of the sensory input is to use my noise canceling headphones. I actually got these at a garage sale. <laughs> um, I use these both in the classroom and at home. The way that I use them in the classroom is that I will put them on during my breaks at recess and at lunch just to drown out all the excess noise from the bells and the children playing outside. But I also might put them on while I'm in class with the students if they need to work with a louder um, volume, if they need to be talking or discussing or if they're doing a high energy activity. And I don't think that I'll be able to manage the overwhelm of that activity. I'll pop the headphones on and my students understand that that just means that everything is fine and um, I need some quiet. Or I might pop the headphones on at other times as a signal to them that I need them to quiet down. And I'll always let them know which one of those two reasons I'm putting the headphones on for. Um, at home, I use my noise canceling headphones when um, I'm in the common space with other people in my household. So if I'm in the living room um, watching TV and my husband or my daughter are in the kitchen making dinner, a lot of times the banging of the cabinets and the clanging of the dishes can be a lot for me, especially when I've been around noise all day at work. So I'll pop my headphones on. I won't even turn any music or anything on. I'll just pop them on and switch on the noise canceling switch so that it dampens out a lot of that excess sound. And that really helps me to come back to a state of calm. I'll also put on the headphones when I am alone in my room at night. Uh, before I'm going to sleep or if I'm taking a nap so that I can um, kind of drown out the noises around the house. Um, and it also helps me when I want to listen to some calming music, I'll put those on and then I can just kind of get into my own world and find myself in a more relaxing state. And that leads me to the second strategy that I've found that helps me when I'm feeling overstimulated. And that is to listen to bilateral stimulation music in my noise canceling headphones. Um, this music is a calming type of music that's a combination of multiple different really gentle sounds that kind of, it's kind of like surround sound in your, in, in the headphones. And it helps like draw your attention away from the stimulating environment on the outside and focus your brain just on these sounds. It's very, very calming and I can get myself into a state of complete relaxation and peace. I'll also listen to bilateral stimulation music in my classroom um, on my breaks uh, before school while I'm setting up the room uh, during my recess and lunch breaks if necessary. Most of those times I won't listen to them in the headphones because I do need to be able to hear the bells and if the phone is ringing in the classroom, but I will put that music on just to bring that stressful affect back down so that I can be prepared for the next round of general chaos that ensues when you're an elementary school teacher. I also listen to bilateral stimulation music in my headphones when I'm at home. And the way that I use it there is when I get home from work, in order to help me transition from the high energy pace of being on a school site and then being in traffic, I'll come home, I'll lay in bed, 
put on the headphones with bilateral stimulation music, and that helps me transition into a quieter, calmer pace once I'm at home. The third strategy I've learned to use to help me when I'm feeling overstimulated is to make use of stim toys. Now, there's a wide variety of stim toys that um, are available to children and adults. Uh, before I knew that I was neurodivergent and that I needed to have that external stimulation, I spent my whole life biting my nails. So my first choice has always been nail biting. But now that I know that stim toys are available and that are an op and that they are an option, I've decided to um, experiment with those. So some of the stim toys that I keep on hand at all times at work and at home are little poppet toys. Um, they just kind of pop. A lot of kids like to play with these. In fact, this one was given to me last year by one of my students who um, was diagnosed as autistic and um, she just wanted me to have it. And I didn't realize how, um, how um, good it feels to just kind of have this in my hand and stretch it and pop it. Another STEM toy that I've recently become very fond of is something called STEM mags. And I have no uh, affiliation with STEM mags. Um, I just want to tell you about it. They are these little um, magnet pieces that stick together. Um, I'm going to try to hold the microphone in my hand and show you what they do at the same time because you need two hands. But they come apart. OK, so if things are looking a little bit different to you, you have not gone crazy. Uh, when I went to edit my video, I realized that when I was playing with the stim mags, I turned off this microphone. So everything else I said from there on out, gone. <laughs> the best laid plans. So if the second half of this video seems a little bit disjointed and not very well prepared, you'll understand why. <laughs> um, I was talking about those stim toys, and the stim mags are wonderful. The other stim toy that I have enjoyed using is one that I found out about from um, a content creator called Mom on the Spectrum. And um, she makes content about being neurodivergent. And she had spoken about something called an Ono Roller. The Ono Roller is a stainless steel or rubber um, roller. It's like two cylinders that are connected, and you roll them back and forth in your hand, um, or you can just hold it and squeeze it. Um, it's very satisfying, um, and I'm not affiliated with Ono at all, but I purchased one for myself and one for each of my two children, and that's another... Um, really wonderful stim toy that I can keep close by to me. I keep it at home, I keep it in my purse, and I take it with me. Um, it's wonderful. It releases a lot of, um, a lot of energy. At night, when I'm sleeping, um, I have all of these pillows here. And although they're beautiful and decorative, one of the main reasons why I have them on my bed is because they each have a different texture, and they provide me with a lot of comforting um, calming stimulation when it's hard for me to calm down my brain and when I'm feeling too hot or too agitated I can stroke this hot pink pillow here that's very soft and velvety or I can stroke this flower petaled pillow that white one over there and that is all different kinds of like fluffy flippy little fabric pieces that feel good against my skin. Um, there's a green one back there that has ruffles on it, and that one is also kind of velvety. And I like to keep these pillows close to my skin, the different textures. Um, it's kind of like the bilateral stimulation music. It just refocuses my mind um, away from um, running thoughts or anxious feelings. Also, when I am going to the movies, I'll take one of those smaller pillows with me, along with my noise-canceling headphones and um, one of my stim toys. Um, and those combination of things help me if the movie is too loud or if it happens to be violent. I don't do well with uh, images of violence. And so I have those to uh, help me calm my nervous system. The fourth strategy that um, I've learned to use to help me when I'm feeling overstimulated is communication. So 
it's really important to communicate your needs. <laughs> as much as sometimes I just want to hide it and I have hid it for all of these years, now that I know, um, I found it very helpful. So in the classroom, I communicate to my students when I am feeling overstimulated. We talked about that prior with the headphones. Um, a lot of them in class feel the same way, so they learn to trust that um, if I can share with them how I'm feeling, then they can share with me how they're feeling. I've also learned to communicate to the members of my family, to my partner and my daughter. So if they are being too loud at any point in time and it's causing me discomfort, I just let them know and ask them if they can help me out by quieting down. My partner is very um, loud when he's walking through the house. He has a heavy step and he accidentally slams cabinets because he's just kind of a big, strong, masculine dude. <laughs> um, and so I just remind him, hey, I'm feeling a little bit overstimulated today or tonight. Can you be more gentle there in the kitchen? And now that we both know what's going on with me, he has no problem being helpful in that way. So communicating is really important. But it's also important to communicate with you. I mean with me, it's also important for me to talk to myself. So if I'm having a moment and I don't think that I'm handling it well, I can talk myself through it by telling myself, this is temporary, you are okay, do something to calm yourself down, you will get through this. So communication is key to helping with overstimulation. Now, these things might not all work for everybody. It really depends on um, how your um, neurodivergence like affects you. Um, so these are the things that work for me. Uh, the fifth and final strategy um, that I've learned recently to use to help me when I'm feeling um, when my when the stimulus is too much for me is to use vagus nerve stimulation. The vagus nerve is the cranial nerve in the back of your neck, and I'm not a physician or a neurologist. I'm just sharing with you the little bits and pieces of what I've recently learned. But if you can stimulate that nerve, it can help you to relax and calm down anxious thoughts or feelings. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to stimulate that nerve, but the way that I choose that works best for me is through breathing techniques. And there's two specific breathing techniques that I like to use. The first one is a 6-4-7 method. So it's an inhale for six, a hold for four, and an exhale for seven. Try it with me. It goes like this. Inhale for six. Hold, exhale for seven. And you could do that one or two times. I inhaled a little too fast this time. It takes practice. <laughs> the second breathing strategy that I use that I learned through Dr. Andrew Huberman here on YouTube is something, uh, I don't know the name of it, but it's a uh, a, a long, deep inhale, and then when you get to the top of that inhale, you take another short inhale, and then exhale. And that one looks and sounds like this. And you do that two or three times. Try with me. It's a fabulous reset of the vagus nerve and really calms you down. If that worked for you and you feel calmer, let me know in the comments. Okay, I learned about these strategies over the course of uh, the last year. Um, some of these strategies I learned from through my profession, being a teacher. They're ones that I've used with students over the years before I even knew that I was also neurodivergent. Headphones, deep breathing, communication, stim toys. Um, I also realized that um, those headphones would work for me when I saw my daughter's friend using them. She is neurodivergent and she would always walk around with headphones around her neck and put them on not to listen to music but to drown out the excess noise of her environment. Sometimes she even wears them when she's at our house just hanging out. And so I thought if she can do that, I can do that. Sometimes they even put the headphones on when I'm going grocery shopping. Some grocery stores can be super loud, especially Costco. 
Um, I also found out about these strategies through my therapist and she especially helped me understand the importance of deep breathing and also of that self-talk, finding time to communicate your needs and honor your own needs to make time for them. So I'm very grateful for her for that. And lastly, YouTube. There are so many fabulous content creators on YouTube that focus on neurodivergence and focus on strategies to mitigate all of the stressors that go along with having this brain trait. I'll list some of them in the description and you can explore them for yourself. There isn't one set of tools that's going to work for everybody. Um, you have to do your own research and you have to be willing to try some things out and find what you can put in your own backpack of tools to help you when you're feeling agitated or when you're, the stimulus of the world around you is too much for you. Um, I came up with this combination of things through trial and error and that's what you need to do for yourself as well. Whether you're neurodivergent or you just can get overstimulated easily, it's important for you to have some tools to help you to calm down so that you don't need to continuously experience that stress throughout your day. You can do your own research. You can talk to a professional, a medical professional, and find the resources that work for you. If this video has been helpful to you, please let me know in the comments and go ahead and watch this one next.